Administration is the primary source of information on the prevalence, patterns, and consequences of alcohol, tobacco, and illegal drug use and abuse in the general United States civilian population ages 12 and older. Abuse of alcohol, tobacco, and illicit drugs is costly to our nation, exacting more than $740 billion annually in costs related to crime, lost work productivity, and health care. Another recent report estimates that that cost may have topped $1 trillion in 2015. Cost-effective treatment is essential. With funds allocated wisely to methods proven clinically to be effective and economically prudent. Effective treatment of opioid use disorder has been identified as a national priority to reduce the rates and societal costs of individual disability associated with opioid use disorder, the infectious disease burden associated with intravenous opioid use, and escalating rates of accidental opioid overdose deaths and pediatric opioid ingestions. The purpose of this talk is to address the following questions. What is medication-assisted treatment? What is the benefit of medication-assisted treatment? What treatments are there and how do they work? What about the accusation that medication-assisted treatment uh, is just replacing one drug with another? Medication-assisted treatment, or MAT, is the use of FDA-approved medications in combination with counseling and behavioral therapies to provide a whole patient approach to the treatment of substance use disorders. There are effective medication-assisted treatments for nicotine use disorder, alcohol use disorder, and opioid use disorder. The purpose of this talk is to review what is available for the treatment of opioid use disorder. <clears throat> MAT is recommended for adults presenting for clinical treatment of opioid use disorder with physiological dependence where intense cravings and persistent symptoms of withdrawal are significant deterrents to ongoing therapy. It has been shown to significantly augment treatment retention, reduce illicit opioid use, reduce the burden of opioid craving, and in the case of two of the approved therapies, provide effective relief of the opioid withdrawal syndrome. Medication-assisted treatment is a stabilizing addition to relapse prevention counseling and mutual help groups in that it has been shown to increase the effectiveness of those interventions. The Food and Drug Administration has approved four medications for, the prevent for preventing opioid relapse and for stabilization and treatment of opioid use disorder. Three approved treatments are recommended for long-term maintenance, buprenorphine, naltrexone, and methadone. Lofexidine is approved for withdrawal symptom control for up to 14 days. Lofexidine uh, is approved, again, for symptom relief for 14 days. It is an office-based practice for use in a primary care office, urgent care, or the emergency department. It is an alpha-2A adrenergic receptor agonist taken as a pill used to help the physical symptoms of opioid withdrawal. Lofexidine can provide withdrawal symptom control during the time it takes someone to get established with a treatment program. Naltrexone uh, comes in many forms. Um, the most commonly uh, used is Vivitrol, which is an extended uh, release uh, intramuscular injection that's given monthly. Rivia is an oral form of naltrexone given as a pill twice daily. May be useful for alcohol disorder, but has not shown to be beneficial for opioid use disorder. Uh, naltrexone is an office-based 
non-addictive opioid antagonist that blocks the effects of other narcotics. It is attractive because it has no abuse potential. It has been shown to be effective for highly motivated individuals, but not for the patient with significant uh, physiological addiction or pain issues. Attempts to pair oral naltrexone with uh, psychosocial interventions aimed at improving compliance and retention in treatment have not demonstrated sustained positive results, and therefore it is not an FDA-approved use of oral naltrexone. Naltrexone does have very few drug-to-drug -drug interactions and a benign side effect profile, but also has the most complicated induction profile because of the need to be completely off of all opioids for 7 to 14 days prior to starting naltrexone in order to avoid severe opioid withdrawal. Methadone is available in several forms as both a brand name product and a generic drug. Dolophin uh, comes in the form of tablets, which is usually used for chronic severe pain. Methadose uh, is an oral concentrate in liquid form used for opioid use disorder. Methadone is a clinic-based opioid agonist that prevents withdrawal while taking it. It is available as a daily liquid dispensed only in specialty, special FDA-approved regulated clinics. The evidence for efficacy both in reducing opioid use and retaining patients in care is strongest for this type of agonist treatment. Methadone maintenance remains the gold standard of care for opioid use disorder. Head-to-head -head comparisons are mainly available for buprenorphine versus methadone maintenance, with methadone demonstrating the highest rates of treatment retention in all studies. But unfortunately, the studies were comparing methadone 50 milligrams daily to a very low dose of buprenorphine 5 milligrams daily. Drug-to-drug -drug interactions are numerous with methadone due to the many cytochrome P450 isoenzymes involved in its liver metabolism. An, an, an advantage of methadone is that it can be started at any time during the overarching course of treatment. A disadvantage, however, is that it takes time to achieve a steady state dose that is therapeutically effective in opioid use disorder. And this time period is one of high risk for treatment dropout an accidental overdose if titration is too rapid. Buprenorphine is available in several forms, both brand name and generic. Bunavil is a buccal film that is placed in the mouth uh, next to the cheek and absorbed through the lining of the mouth. Cassipia is a sublingual film absorbed under the tongue. Probufen uh, is an implant. Uh, it's little rods that are placed under the skin it provides a low dose of buprenorphine for up to six months. Sublocade is an injection for subcutaneous use that provides a stable state of buprenorphine for up to a month. Again, these injections have to be repeated monthly. Suboxone is a sublingual film for daily sublingual or buccal use. Subutex is buprenorphine without naltrexone. Um, it is used as a sublingual film or a tablet. Um, it is used mostly for women who are pregnant. Subsolve is, a, again, a combination of buprenorphine and naloxone. It is a sublingual tablet for daily use. Buprenorphine is an opposite-based opioid, um, an agonist and antagonist that blocks other narcotics while reducing withdrawal risk. Methadone, on the other hand, does not block the effect of other narcotics. Owing to its partial uh, agonist properties, buprenorphone is considered to be much safer than methadone in that it is not associated with a significant risk for respiratory depression. However, in combination with sedatives or hypnotics like diazepam or Valium, it poses a risk for sedation with reduced respiratory drive. When buprenorphine is started, it requires that the individual be in mild to moderate uh, opioid withdrawal prior to the initial dosing in order to avoid precipitating severe opioid withdrawal, but relief is achieved within 24 to 72 hours. Other treatments that might be used in connection uh, with these FDA-approved therapies uh, are clonidine, which at times can help for both withdrawal symptom control 
or to help with insomnia. Trazodone is used at times in, or, for uh, sleep assistance or in very low doses uh, to help control anxiety. Gabapentin has been shown to be of some benefit for assistance with weaning from buprenorphone or methadone. Despite the volume of clinical studies that show significant benefit with use of medication-assisted treatment, the belief is still present, uh, especially in the uh, treatment recovery field, that medication-assisted treatment is not consistent uh, with recovery. So what is the goal of recovery? If it is engagement in a recovery program and live a life of sobriety, then MAT has shown to double the likelihood that this will occur. What is the disease of addiction? If you believe the studies that show addiction to be a disease of altered brain structure and function, and not just a lack of willpower, then you will understand the need uh, for MAT to aid in neuronal healing. Yes, the ideal goal would be uh, for an individual to be completely chemical free, to live a life that uh, would be free of any of these chemicals, but studies show us otherwise. In light of the current data, believing that MAT is just replacing one drug with another is a very dangerous belief that stems from ignorance of the current clinical data and a degree of arrogant turf protection. Our programs are important, but not more important than our vulnerable patients. On the other hand, it is true that MAT itself is not recovery. The purpose of MAT is to aid pro-social recovery programs and prevent relapses and overdoses. Opioid use disorder is a debilitating, costly, and often deadly disease. Our patients deserve to be treated with the best tools available. For references and additional help, uh, please look at the uh, Fractured Resilience uh, website. Thank you.